Hey there, so welcome to another update. A lot has happened for me. My last two videos did really well and I'm going to speak at the end uh, to not take time uh, about it. Uh, but um, this week in Ukraine has been really, really interesting and it was a couple of clear signs of things to come, but uh, let's get over it. So let us get into the map. So my map right now is in Ukrainian, obviously, uh, but I'm pretty sure that you are all fine with that because we've seen this map hundreds, if not thousands of times by this point. If you haven't learned Ukrainian geography by now, I'm not sure you're following uh, this work close enough. <laughs> and then let's just uh, listen uh, just uh, generally about this. So we've talked, uh, I'm going to just uh, take this a little, little away. So we talked uh, last uh, update that there is uh, like a grouping of uh, Russian troops here, here. Uh, they obviously want to push here. So there is a lot of stuff happening there. And these were kind of the three main groups. So let's firstly cover the situation in Severodonetsk. So in Severodonetsk, last time we spoke, there was a Ukrainian tactical maneuver executed where they put themselves into close combat with the Russian troops that entered the city, therefore trying to um, trying to cut down the advantage uh, from the Russian Federation in their uh, um, heavy weapon superiority, like the advanced firepower with the artillery and the airstrikes. Uh, since then, basically, Russians uh, tried to kind of put some more meat into the grinder. It didn't really work. Uh, and instead, they bit the bullet and they fell back. So right now, they've broken the close contact in Severodonetsk. So there is a lot of gray area uh, in between uh, Ukrainians that are mostly centered and uh, around the uh, production area, which is on the west uh, from in the city. And then Russians mostly in the east. And uh, right now, they've broken the contact line and it's mostly just artillery wailing uh, both sides pretty much. So right now there is not that many close fightings. Obviously sides try to push here and there, but the contact is not like we're not back in, in the situation that we were at the start of this week. An important part was happening here uh, around the Izium direction. So the Izium direction is where basically I expressed to you that, that Russians after failing a couple of time crossing the river and around this area to quickly kind of uh, finish this encirclement, they decided, okay, let's focus around the Izium and maybe throw in forces that way, which they did because there has been reports both that they've been strengthening uh, this position with some of the newer reserves that were coming in from Russia. They've also rebuilding a lot of the railway. You see the white lines here uh, at the top around here. Uh, so some of those uh, lines have been uh, damaged and now they've been rebuilding. And there has been also reports that some of the some of the forces that were kind of in reserves for Severodonetsk, for the assault on Severodonetsk, have been instead moved to, to support the Izium direction. So right now we're basically throwing again the, the party uh, around the Izium direction because this is the place where the river of Sever Severski Donetsk was crossing, crossed. So they, we know that they have advanced to Sviatohorsk and we know that they've been trying to push uh, through Liman. We know, uh, those are the two directions that we outlined last time. And this is indeed what is happening. Uh, the, the Russians, uh, basically the ma major gain in this direction is they took the Sviatohorsk. But let me uh, just kind of get this map closer and you already see where this is coming from. So what we're expecting right now is that there is going to be a river crossing somewhere here, or or there is not going to be a river crossing. They will just try to advance around the the road because there has been like Dolginka, which is um, that's been let's let's there's been a lot of fighting. So the tra the name re literally translates as a, like the long village or the long town, and it did indeed take them very long to kind of advance towards it. So that's a little bit of a joke there. Um, um, but the, uh, the main target that Russians want is obviously uh, half encircle Slovensk and then hopefully cut this road off. Uh, this would be their ideal plan and this is what they're going. But uh, I'm going to touch on this a bit later. This is the direction and obviously the second direction uh, uh, is Papasna um, uh, part. 
in Pipasna part, uh, we know that Russians have advanced. And right now, if the road before was kind of just uh, shot at, uh, at all the transport, right now there is from time to time heavy fighting exactly at the road. So Russians are slowly but surely kind of trying to advance towards this this highway that uh, is uh, connecting Bakhmut to Lysychansk. And uh, the most uh, fighting was happening around this week, around this area and around like the south part here. So it was back and forth between Ukrainian armies. So there is very minuscule gains by the Russians, but then there are losses somewhere else. Uh, despite Komishevacha here being encircled as uh, Russian, uh, we know that it, this is not completely true. There is still heavy fighting that's going on. Basically, it's 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 a fighting village that goes back and forth between the, the parties. So, so uh, basically, in these directions right now, there is uh, a lot of contested territory, and Russians are having are not having a good time trying to advance forward. But let's talk about the important part. So. We were expecting, we know that uh, we discussed last time that there, uh, that there has been these three big groupings and all of these three big groupings were ready to advance. And what was expected was expected like a major push, right? What was expected, there is going to be like an actual flow of firepower. There's going to be like a massive push into these two directions. And I'm not saying like a, a small one that, that we ended up having by the end of the week. It was expected that it's going to be really massive. And there's been a couple of, like, the experts that I'm listening to, they've been floating around a couple of theories. The first uh, theory that was kind of discussed is that Russians uh, kind of looked at their resource count because I've said to you last time that the, the trained infantry that the Russians received as the new reinforcements was dog shit. And basically, one idea was that maybe the Russian generals kind of just looked at it and said, well, if we just throw them in now, then basically Ukraine is now going to get some heavier systems with HIMARS and they're going to get reinforced really, really hard. Like, again, Russians are really winning on the political front here because the delays in, in weapon supplies are hitting Ukraine hard, so which delays the inevitable counteroffensive. But all in all, that would still mean that for Russians... So one of the idea might be that the Russians are starting to count their uh, manpower finally, which is not something I personally believe. Like, why would you randomly do this? Like, it doesn't matter. But uh, the second, which is more important, was the reports that Ukrainians have executed a lot of the uh, long-distance uh, artillery strikes. So basically, all these three circles that you see on the, on the map, in all of those uh, major points, like major hubs for either troop uh, re reinforcements, troop relaxations, or 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 uh, weapon supply factories like all along this front line they were all hard hit during this week and this delayed the advanced heavily and here i'm going to start some speculation so this is me talking not the experts and i think this is um kind of the, the 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 frost first dread sign for the russians in in this part of the operation this is kind of like uh, the things to come because in my perspective, right, we know that Ukrainians are slowly but surely are getting replaced. Their old 152mm uh, artillery that was used up, old, poorly maintained in Ukrainian army, and th they didn't have enough uh, munition supplies for that artillery. Now is slowly but surely is being replaced by more modern, uh, like top of the line, 155mm long range artillery, which shoots a lot further than a lot of Russian artillery does. And this creates a very, very, very bad dynamic for the Russians, because that means that Ukrainians are now having enough artillery to control this region. So this is the kind of the flip side of, of Russians um, um, having focused so much on this one particular direction. 
So while they were able to get essentially right now the artillery advantage that was reported by the experts being about 1 to 15, 1 to 20, yes. So for any one gun of artillery that Ukrainians are using, there is about 15 to 20 guns of Russians in this direction concentrated. Um, this also means that this whole artillery and everything is highly concentrated. So all things are, are basically in the same place. So that means that for Ukrainian artillery, they basically need to move a little bit around. So like the maneuverability of the Ukrainian artillery, they don't have to, you know, uh, move them like hundreds of, or hundreds of kilometers away, but maybe like 20, 50 kilometers and they can already reach some other part of the, of the uh, front. So this is where uh, the danger kind of starts getting in. Ukrainians are getting the saturation of uh, artillery and they're able to delay Russian advance more and more. So when the Heimers going to come and people are saying it's going to be probably month to month and a half because training takes time and they are still not being sent in any uh, sufficient numbers. It is expected they're going to be sent only as a part of the next uh, uh, sent, sent out by the uh us department is going to be around 7 billion uh worth and at that moment basically the russian tactic that they've been using because of the range of the high mars and because russia is so concentrated on this just one direction basically that whole plan it seems to me is going to fall completely in disarray they will not be able to advance because any kind of concentration of their forces, supplies, or anything is just going to get destroyed. And even if they say, okay, we're just going to maybe exchange, uh, ex extend our, our uh, chains of supplies, well, I, I will remind you that it, it didn't go that well in the Northern Campaign. And Russian logistics haven't been improving as much. The only way that they're having uh, good time is because Ukraine didn't have long-range artillery. And uh, this is very close to the actual core regions of the Russian Federation. So they're able to supply things quite fast. And you see they're still... Um, uh, there's still um, uh, railway lines available in this area. But to uh, wrap it up, uh, basically... We've seen, as I reported last time, we've seen the removal of a lot of forces in from the from the second lines uh, into the front line around Slavyansk. Uh, Zaporizhia also has been weakened. Right, there has been a lot of uh, forces moved out from there. And Kherson, there has been very interesting reports. So right now, there has been reports that Ukraine is pushing the, uh, uh, to towards Kherson right now. Uh, and since if the fighting is happening right now, that means I'm going to get uh, some kind of news maybe in a day or two. Um, but what can this mean in what I've heard so far is that while there was some forces in there, because there was like basically no forces here to quickly reinforce them, they felt kind of shitty, right? These are guys here didn't have the best morale in the world. And they are feeling kind of the pressure. They're basically sitting inside of their fortifications because in Kherson they know that they are not being really loved. The population there is extremely hostile. They don't really want to show their faces too much in the cities. But they are literally sending, sitting down in their bunkers and they are waiting for the Ukrainians to advance. But there has been reports that the, they are not having a good time in their morale aspect. And it seems that they have been falling back from some of the villages just to kind of get into the safer direction. Essentially, there was like a forward village that didn't have a lot of fortification. And basically a unit would just say, well, no, 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 fuck it, fuck it. Like we're just going to fall back to where we have our trenches, where we have our bunkers or whatever. And this is, this seems what it's happening. So I would say it's my feeling again. And what I've heard reporting on the effectiveness, it seems that at least... In this direction, there is some wavering about the what can they actually do if Ukraine advances. And that's the situation right now. So we should expect and see things to come. We should expect uh, and see uh, if there is going to be major new advances. Um, 
I'm still I'm I still believe that Ukrainians have some kind of a plan and I believe that they they know that they have the forces to sustain these areas because this is too obvious of an encirclement to them just be chill with this. So I think that they are confident that they can hold this. And let's talk about now. Thank you so much for watching and uh, see you next time. But now I'm going to dedicate the last couple of minutes to talk about the channel and what it is. So I am not a professional YouTuber. I hope uh, I, I know that like my first, uh, what, five, ten viewers uh, knew this because I started making these uh, Ukraine updates because basically my friend asked to uh, talk about this uh, because I follow all the news. I speak bo both Russian and Ukrainian flawlessly, but I'm not a military analyst. I never claimed I was. And uh, the last two videos basically exploded for me because, uh, as I said, from... 15 to like 1500 views maybe that's the best best videos i randomly start getting like a 1.3 1.4 thousand which is what and uh, i like a lot of them i've noticed was like a lot of russian trolls uh, as well appearing which is pretty cool uh because if i mean if russians are dedicating the russian or russian trolls are dedicating and try your time their time their time to to in your channel that is a sign of uh, of uh, respect, and uh, uh, I already expressed this. Uh, maybe not not on the video, but I'm going to express this. I would love to get in some kind of like a dark list, or you know, like hunted by Russia list, or or like being restricted to enter Russia. Because to be honest, I'm a little bit ashamed uh, towards my Ukrainian friends because they have been all claimed to be Nazis just by default because they have Ukrainian passport, so they have it easy. They're being banned from Russia. And I'm unfortunately, like being a European, it, it take, takes takes some effort. I really need to prove myself to get on that ban list. But we'll see. Maybe if I do this work uh, well enough and and uh, uh, explain why is Russia losing and how it's gonna lost lose some more. Maybe I'm gonna get uh, on some uh, bad side with some Russians and gonna put me on some sanctions list from the Russian side, obviously. Um, Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you so much for leaving comments. Um, every engagement is appreciated. Um, I hope you have a great day and see you next time. Russia is going to lose this and it's going to lose. She's going to lose it very hard.